Well, hello, everybody. You know, with Russia attacking Ukraine, a lot of people are asking a lot of questions right now. I've even had some people call me up or email me or text me. Uh, does this mean we're in the very, very last days, the end of the age, or as the King James puts it, end of the world? In the world, there, the word there should be age. And could Christ be coming at any time now? So there are a lot of questions coming up. So I thought that before Passover, keep your eyes on Passover, keep focused on Passover. I think it would be, it would be good for us to talk about, are we in the very, very end of the days uh, before Christ's return? Are we, are we right there? Uh, or does a lot still have to happen? Certainly the stage is being set. So welcome all of you. I'm Philip Shields, host of Light on the Rock. I work with it with my wife and, and Scott and Brandy. Uh, Doucette, who uh, worked so hard to put out these videos and audios. Remember, we have audios as well. Uh, new sermons coming out on the audio section, as well as the videos coming out on the video section. And then we have blogs, which are short articles. I really recommend you guys just go right through. Sometime we'll make a short video of how to maximize the use. You can see all the almost 300 sermons that we have on board there. Uh, in one place if you learn how to use it, so that's what we'll do. Anyway, welcome all of you. This is part one of two parts of a series, this teaching series on uh, are we at the very end of days. <clears throat> Some of you have said you like the word, several now have said the word teaching instead of sermons, so I'll use that more often too. So has the Great Tribulation started? The Great Tribulation. I know there's trouble, time of trouble. For the, if you lived in Mariupol in uh, Ukraine right now, being absolutely savagely reduced to dust and ashes, it's so bad. I mean, there's still 100,000 people uh, still stuck in there, and hundreds and hundreds of women and children have been killed. For them in Mariupol, it would certainly seem like this has to be the Great Tribulation. But the one the Bible talks about, no, hasn't started yet, the one, the Great Tribulation for the whole world, and especially for believers in Messiah, especially for those of us who accept Yeshua as our Savior, the Great Tribulation has not happened yet. And um, um, though we certainly know that many, many are being persecuted terribly for their belief in Jesus Christ and Yeshua all around the world, and uh, keep praying for them, certainly be praying for all the people of the Ukraine. Now, is Christ returning at any moment now? By the way, before I move on, let me just say one thing, though. Americans especially, we are used to a level of democracy we just don't see in the rest of the world. What Putin and Russian soldiers are doing to Ukraine is just beyond the pale. No excuse. But let me say this. Zelensky on Monday, what is it, March 21, I believe, suspended, banned, banned all 11 opposition parties. One of the leaders of the opposition party is in jail. He's been in jail for a while. All of the media, the TV, the news media, and, and different media forms are all under, as of Monday, March 21, government control right now. So Zelensky, in many ways, is was a hero. But doing what he just did on Monday, that does not strike me as what a democracy is like. When you can't say anything, uh, giving a counter opinion to what he has or whatever. He, he's become a dictator in Ukraine. So just be aware that what we're hearing on the news is what the news people want us to hear. Be watching for that as we go through this sermon. So is Christ returning at any time? Many are expecting a rapture at any, at any moment now. A rapture. And I guarantee you they won't see it. Not the kind of rapture they're expecting. Many things have yet to happen before Christ returns. Watch my sermon. I gave a sermon some time ago. Uh, look under sermons, and if you go down, I think December or so, maybe, no, I, even before that, about seven months ago, in August or September of 2021, when will Christ return? So um, uh, a lot more detail in some areas are given in there than what I'm going to give here. I'm giving detail that's not in that one. Anyway, is it true that it wouldn't take much to uh, light the spark that could cause World War III? Could the 
Russia attack on Ukraine turn into a World War III or wider European conflict? It certainly could. And it certainly wouldn't take much to do that. So we'll cover all of that much, much more. And we get get into uh, what, where we stand in, in the line of prophecy right now. I'll tell you, speakers are all over the map on this. People who are talking on it like, about it like I am. They're all, we're all over the map. Really, we are. I'll try to use a lot of scriptures, common sense, what we see going on. But I will suspect very strongly this as well. That when it's all said and done, and Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is reigning on the earth, I suspect we'll all look at each other and say, you know what, it sure happened differently. The details of it were very different than what we thought. I think we have the overview. The, the, the overview is what Yeshua himself gives us. But there are speakers out there who are very dogmatic that it's got to be this way, it's got to be that way, and we frankly really don't know all the details yet. We'll get more details as we go along. But, you know, certainly it's true. I want you to be very aware of this. Certainly, especially in the last two years, the world has changed dramatically. The world has been changing a lot over the last 20 or 30 years, but in the last two or three years, especially since 2020, it's been changing a lot. I'll give you some examples. Right now in America, <clears throat> let's see how our country has changed. We have a nominee for the Supreme Court in the United States, the first black female being nominated, and she could not define what a woman is. I think that's significant evidence of how it's changed. Also, the Supreme Court some years ago struck down the law passed by 31 or 32 states where in their state they had all voted to say that the definition of marriage is between a man and a woman. That was struck down. Now it can be between any two consenting people. It doesn't even say two, I don't think. But my point is the Constitution made it clear that what is not clearly stated in the Constitution is something for the states to uh, make the rules on for their own state. And that's being forgotten by a lot of people. The Supreme Court had no business striking down the, the ruling in 32 state legislatures of the definition of marriage. That will have a profound change, long term and short term, in our country. We have a male body swimming against female swimmers. His, his, his slash her name. Her name is Leah Thomas, claiming to be female in gender, but still having all the advantages of a male. When he was swimming against men, he was number four, he was ranked in the world number 462. 462 of all male swimmers. That's where he placed. Now, as a female swimmer, he says, she says, he's ranked number one. I'm so proud of Governor DeSantis, who declared today that no, in Florida, they're going to recognize as the winner of that 500 meter freestyle. The one who came in number two, a woman, who had a body of a woman, who is a woman. So we still have some people who, will be, who are daring to say things. Most people are afraid to say anything. We have our children being taught in school, in some states, many states, that if they're white, they're automatically a, an oppressor. If they're black, they're automatically an oppressed. And thank God we have black parents who are even standing up and saying this simply is not true. I'm CEO of a great company, one said, I make decisions, I go places, I do things that were not possible 60 years ago, but are possible today because we are not uh, what they're all saying in the critical race theory teachings. And then we also have, being, we're being told, the thieves are being told in California, if you keep the total value of what you steal below $950, I think that's the number, uh, you won't be arrested, you won't go to court, you won't uh, certainly go to jail. And we have people calling for defunding the police, attacking the police, killing the police. This is going on. Our president has no regard for borders. And he's letting anybody and everybody from 160 nations uh, come into, the, from all over the world, in other words, come into our country. Many of them are what we call gotaways. They never were caught. We have no idea who they are. They have no idea. We have no idea who they are. We have arrested some who are 
known terrorists. How many got away who are terrorists? How many are setting up cells across America right now? This is not going to go well. We also have <clears throat> we also have many of them bringing in disease. Whether it's COVID or VD or TB, they're not being checked. And they can get on airplanes without masks. They can be flown wherever they want to be flown to. This is insane. Let me speak up. This is insane. Insane. Now, the USA also, up until now, up until recently, has been recognized as the uh, world's dominant superpower. That's being challenged now. I think all around the world, we are now looking for, the world is looking for, uh, a replacement for the United States, a new world order. Even President Biden mentioned that today, March 20, what is today, 23 or so? Um, I think it's 23 today. But he is announcing that we're ready for a new world order. And China wants to be a leader in that new world order, maybe allied with Russia, maybe a newly invigorated Europe. Russia was so afraid of NATO ever doing anything to them. And now by their intrusions into uh, and, and war into Ukraine, they have done more in a few weeks to bring Europe together than anything else that could have happened. If I was talking to you in October, November, December last year, 2021, I would have been saying, well, Europe's sure taking their time to come together if they're going to be the superpower of the end. And then in just a matter of a week, bang, Germany sending lethal aid to Ukraine. They hadn't done that since 1945. They'd stayed out in Japan as well and, uh, and uh, in Germany. And they both had the technology to be building super weapons that they, whatever they wish to have. So we're going to see a realigning of the dollar. Uh, we have already Saudi Arabia uh, saying to China, come on in, we'll pay you with, you can pay for it in yuan, China's, Chinese dollars, Chinese yuan, and uh, we'll give you a discounted rate and all that kind of stuff as a way of protesting what Biden and company are doing against, um, against them, against Saudi Arabia, by warming up to Iran again and, and warming up to their nuclear, nuclear uh, reactor, nuclear bid. Uh, it, it's not going well in the Middle East about that. COVID-19 has helped every country, I'm talking about how the world has changed, has helped every country experiment with experimental uh, emergency powers, emergency powers, executive orders by, by senators, by not senators, by governors, by presidents, prime ministers, by mayors. And they, they found that, boy, they, they can have a lot of power without having the people vote on it by simply using an executive order saying this is an emergency. It's kind of like a martial law. So sorry, but you can't assemble in church peaceably because of COVID going around. Oh, we'll keep the casinos and the hashish bars open and liquor stores open, but we won't let you go to church. Freedom of speech. You get canceled if you speak out against what is the approved thing to say about COVID and all kinds of things. Freedom of religion. Freedom to bear arms. All of these things are being bad, badly eroded. And they must be eroded for the beast power to come on to where no one can buy or sell unless they had the mark of the beast. For many people, uh, they were wondering, is this the mark of the beast? Is that the mark of the beast? Uh, this COVID passport was sort of um, certainly setting the stage for practice, a practice run that if we say that without this COVID passport to show you don't have COVID, that you've been tested for it and all of that, and you're wearing a mask, now you can come into the store and buy and sell. And then they closed all these mom and pa shops and left the big box stores open. This means, though, this lack of respect for our constitutional rights, our Constitution and its freedoms, like the 10 Bill of Rights, are on the chopping block. They really are. So yes, things have changed and put your seatbelt on because there's a lot more changes that are coming. That's for sure. That's for sure. In the last days, perilous times shall come. 2 Timothy 3.1 says, there's still far more. Now, as far as the exact day and hour of Christ's return, uh, Yeshua said, I don't know if he still doesn't know if, uh, or if the Father has told him already by now, but at, when he was asked, he said, I don't know. It's up to the Father 
when the exact day and hour will be. We don't know. So it could be longer. I'm absolutely confident because of everything Yeshua himself said that Yeshua is not coming back within three, four, or five years. Certainly not within three or four. It's just not going to happen yet. There's too many things that got to happen. I put those, I laid those all out in the sermon, When Will Christ Return? You can just type that in the search bar and it'll come up for you. Now, when he does return, it's going to appear very sudden, like a trap springing shut. Look at Luke 21, 34 to 36. Take heed to yourselves. Take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing and drunkenness. You're out there partying, having so much good fun. You're out there golfing and all, whatever the equivalent would be today. I'm not saying it's wrong to go golfing or have a party. What I'm saying is, he says, don't get focused on these things and the cares of this life, the worries. How am I going to make this payment? How am I going to pay this gas bill? That that day come upon you unexpectedly. For it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape. Watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to escape. A couple of translations say, watch and pray that you may overcome, for, for, based on the Greek there, to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. But notice the verse above it, just a minute here. The verse above it says, for it will come like a snare, like a big trap. I've got here a mouse trap. Got to be careful I don't break my fingers on this thing. I put a little peanut butter up there. And let's say we set this mouse trap out there and this poor little mouse is hungry and smells the peanut butter I've got there. Can you see the peanut butter, the brown? Okay, I've got it set. Now here comes the mouse. Da -da 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 -da. And he's unaware of how quickly and suddenly his end can come. And so he sees the peanut butter. He starts to, he starts, can you see that? Better do it this way, I guess. Watch my finger. All right, he sees, <laughs> you're all worried for me, aren't you? And so he, he, he finally takes a step on this trap here. That scared me. <laughs> Probably scared all of you. See, that trap, that mouse isn't going anywhere now. Probably broke its neck on that one. I don't see any of them alive when they do that. Uh, we haven't had any mice here for a while, but, you know, it's uh, it's something to be aware of. We um, we had something else here for a while. We had to set some of these out, but, but they're gone. Anyway, as a trap, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, we go along our merry way, and then, boom, everything changes. You got it? So that's the word of Christ today. Don't get down. Don't get distracted. Don't let life's cares bother you so much. Some will be protected from the worst of these times, and we'll talk about that in a minute. The disciples of you, now let's go to Matthew 24, and let's start reviewing what Christ himself said. A lot of you know this stuff, but listen to it, and this, the angles I'll give. They'd just seen Herod's temple with Christ, and Christ, remember, called it my father's house, my father's house. You made my father's house a den of thieves. And, um, but anyway, my point is, they said, look at all these beautiful stones and buildings. Matthew 24, 1 and 2. Let's post it up there. Maybe you have it up already. And verse 2, Jesus said to them, do you not see all these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left upon the other um, and, and that shall not be thrown down. Not one stone. And that's happened. So when he starts answering the question, they ask him specifically, his disciples uh, came up and asked him, in verse 3 now, they, now they've walked on over to the Mount of Olives, which is just a little jaunt away from the Temple Mount, and the disciples came to him, Matthew 24, 3, saying, tell us, when will these things be? What do you mean the stones, not you know, the whole temple destroyed? And what will be the sign of your coming? And of the end of the age, not end of the world, like King James and a couple others put it. It's not the end of the planet. It's the end of this age. Yeshua's answer, therefore, is threefold. When will the temple be destroyed? When will you return? And when will be the end of the age? 
course, the return of Christ, end of age, could be melded into one point. So let's pick up in verse 4. Jesus answered and said, now remember, they came to him privately. Verse 3, let's look at that again real quickly. The disciples came to him at Mount of Olives privately. He, he's not saying this to the whole world. He's saying it to the, the disciples. So he answers them, the disciples. Verse 4, take heed that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many saying Christ is the Christ. Some will say that they're the Christ, they're the Messiah. Either way, they'll deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Is Russia going to invade in January, December, and January this year? Is Russia going to invade? Rumors of war. And then they did. See that you're not troubled. I'm very troubled by what I see happening to the children and the old people, and the women, and their mothers, and pregnant mothers. Very troubled by that. But in the end, I can't let it trouble me too much and get me distracted from where God says and where Yeshua says my focus needs to be. See that you're not troubled, I mean, verse 6, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We're not there yet. Verse 7, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes in various places. And these are just the beginning of sorrows. The really bad stuff comes up later, he says. Well, thank you. <laughs> the word here for nation, by the way, is ethnos, where we get the word ethnic. Ethnic groups will rise up against other ethnic groups. Races against other races. Nations against nations. can all mean all of that. Uh, but he says, expect it to be bad, but it's not the end yet. And this corresponds, by the way, Matthew 24, to the seals. The seals are like if you roll up a scroll and, 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 and you want a certain part of it to be hidden, as you roll it up, you, you put candle drops or something, some kind of seal that would glue it kind of together at that spot. Then you roll it up some more, put another seal. That's what they mean by the seal. And Revelation 6 talks about this scroll that is opened and the, the, the Lamb of God, Yeshua, begins to open it. And then this beast power, this living creature, this living creature, the, the cherub, one of the cherubim around God's throne, speaks like thunder and says, what do you see? What do you, and so on. So let's pick it up here, Revelation 6. And you're going to see that it really corresponds really well with Matthew 24. The first thing Yeshua said is there'll be uh, many false teachers going around. Matthew, uh, Revelation 6 is not about the return of Jesus, as some say. Now, I saw a lamb, Revelation 6, 1, opened the, uh, when the lamb opened the seals, I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, come and see, come and see, you know. I wish I had a voice like, like that. Scare everybody. <laughs> My grandkids wouldn't come give me a hug anymore or sit on, or sit on me or play, you know, play with me. Anyway, I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. The white horse, Satan comes as an angel of light and white and all of that, good. Uh, this, is false, this is false religion. This is not Jesus Christ, as some are teaching. Seal number two. Then he opened the second seal. Remember, Yeshua said, there'll be wars and rumors of wars, but don't be alarmed. Seal number two says, Revelation 6, verse 3 and 4, a fiery red horse, second living creature, saying, come and see. And I saw another seal, another horse, fiery red, went out. It was granted to that one who sat on it to take peace from the earth. Everywhere. Take the peace from everywhere. Go around the whole world. Start wars. Start people killing each other. And that people should kill one another. There's a lot of killing going on that we never hear about much in the United States. There are Christians being killed in Nigeria by Muslims and other places. Whole villages being ransacked, burned, women raped, girls kidnapped, boys kidnapped. It's going on even as I speak. We should be saying something about it. Okay, he was told to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. So wars, lots of warfare, big warfare, 
could eventually involve biological weapons. Russia has used those. Syria has used those. Chemical warfare, nuclear warfare. We've used those. Hiroshima, Nagasaki. Fiery red, the color of fire. Isn't it interesting, though, that the main instigators of the, the bigger wars and the bigger rumors of wars, like China versus Taiwan, that's a rumor of war, are red countries, the Red Army of Russia, the Red Army of Communist China. And, uh, in fact, the flag of Communist China, we can put it up there, is a bright red uh, with five stars, the main big star being the Communist Chinese Party, I believe, and then the four stars, the, the other four parts of China, giving it allegiance. If you go to Russia, in Moscow, they have, uh, where the Kremlin is, they call that whole area the Red Square. I'm, I'm not saying this is the meaning of red. I'm saying I think it's interesting that the main uh, suppliers of warfare and rumors of war are Russia and China right now. Uh, Iran could be added to that. We certainly have done our part. America has in supplying weapons. We certainly have. But um, it's going to get worse. Don't panic. It's still the beginning. <laughs> I'd like to say to us all, be, let's be prudent, though. When things start to shape up around us, danger starts shaping up. Get out. I kept saying to my wife, why on earth are all these Ukrainians sitting around having coffee? This was like a few days before Russia actually invaded. They had weeks. They had months to watch the Russians bring the armies and tanks and armored personnel and everything else they had. We, they had many weeks of watching it come forward. And I kept saying to Carol... In 2008, Russia invaded the country of Georgia and took a couple of its provinces. In 2014, they invaded Ukraine and claimed that now Crimea, the southern part of Ukraine that sticks, is the part that divides the, the uh, that gives you access to the Sea of Azov and all of that. Anyway, but they, 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 they've seen in recent years Russia go to war and, and attack, conquer, why were all these people not sending their older folks out of the country, or at least to the western part of Ukraine to begin with? I know they may not have, peop have had people to send them to, but, I mean, as refugees, just get out of there and then figure it out later. And if you were wrong and there was no war, you could come back. But once bombs start falling, it's a bit late. So you and me, you and I, when we start seeing these things, uh, Jesus even said, those of you who dwell in Judea, when you see certain things happening, when you see this man of sin set up some horrible, despicable idol or something, the abomination that causes desolation, get out of there. Don't even go back to your house to get your jacket or, or your cell phone or your dog or your cat or your jacket. Just get out. Head for the hills. Get away from downtown Jerusalem, he's saying. So what were they waiting for up there in Ukraine? I don't know. A wise man sees danger approaching and protects himself or at least prepares. So what happens after you have wars? Uh, what's happening in Ukraine right now? Just take a look. What's happened in other countries uh, that were at war? What happens is that the, the farmers can't plant. What they do plant gets uh, and, and harvested gets uh, stolen by the various armies. Ukraine is a major world producer of food. And right now, no one's planting. No one's going to be harvesting. Uh, it, there's going to be another famine in Ukraine. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a second. So the, what follows war is pestilence and famine. You're weakened by, by the war and the stress and the famine, so you're more susceptible to pestilence. Uh, Ukraine is a ma major food producer. Russia is trying to uh, repeat, I believe, the starvation famine of 1932 and 1933. You might, might just Google it. Starvation of Ukraine, 1932, 1933. Uh, you can look at the word holodomor, holodomor. It means to kill by starvation. That's what the Ukrainians call that period. It's called the holodomor, if I'm pronouncing it right. It means to kill by starvation. So maybe we can put that word up there. Holodomor. Agriculturally, Ukraine, as far as world production goes, is number two in all the world in production of barley. It's number three in all the world in production of corn. They supply most of the corn to China, of all things, as I understand it. Number four in the world to put in, in potatoes. Number eight in wheat. 
if those crops don't get planted and harvested, there's, there's going to be an impact on famine around the world. Number three is famine. The seal number three is the black horse. And uh, going back to what Jesus said, there'll be famines and pestilences. He said that in Matthew 24. In Revelation 6, verses 5 and 6, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature. There are four of them. And uh, he said, look, uh, come and see. And so I looked, and behold, a black horse. And he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand, weights. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius. A denarius is a day's wage. So if an average income is $25 an hour, let's just say, times eight, that's $200. Um, I'm sure you don't base it on minimum wage, but $200 for a quart of wheat. Three quarts of barley for, a den for $200. And don't harm the oil and the wine. So, I mean, it, it's a lot of famine going to come. And then on the heels of famine are pandemics, the worst of pandemics, one after the other, will, will start coming in the next few years. If we are in the years leading right up to Christ's return, if we are, then we should see some pan pandemics one after the other. Not, COVID was just a trial run. COVID was just a shot across our bow to get us to wake up. COVID had 2% lethality. 2% of the people, it's too bad for the many, many, many thousands who died from, from or with COVID. It's a difference. But imagine if a pandemic started with a lethality rate of 85% instead of 2 That's coming, folks. That's coming. And with more and more pandemics, what if we had three or four, two or three of them in a row rolling through? with 50, 60, 80, 90 percent lethality. Once you got it, you're going to die, kind of like the, the Black Plague of uh, Europe. Most of the people who got it died. I think it was like an 80 percent lethality. So with the pandemics will come less and less freedoms. They'll use this executive order again. No, you can't leave your house. No, you can't go shopping. No, you can't go in that store unless you put a diaper over your face. All these things that they're requiring now. So right now, it's wise for you and I to, for you and me to stock up on food, on water, batteries, masks, uh, have a few gallons of gasoline uh, that can help you get, help tide you by, get, get, get you through it. Uh, get a generator. I got a generator. I bought a, a propane tank so that if our power goes, we can still cook and heat things up. Um, have extra gas and petrol. When hard times are coming, uh, fill up your bathtub if you see uh, terrible weather forecasts, hurricanes coming or whatever. Fill up your bathtub with water in case everything stops for a while, if tornadoes are coming and all that. Um, we had a tornado warning just the other day right here in our town. So I, I see that there's a big strong one near um, New Orleans the other day. I believe all of us, believers and non-believers alike, We'll go through the wars. We'll see many wars. We'll see some of the famines. We'll see some of the pandemics. Together, we're all, we'll, we're all part of that. I think we're going to be, many of us will be protected from the Great Tribulation the final three and a half years. But the times of hardship before that, I really don't think there's going to be a rapture. I really don't. And someday I'll have to talk about why I say that. Because many of you do believe in the rapture. I believe completely in resurrection. I believe completely in 1 Thessalonians 4.16 that with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God that, there, that we shall be changed in, in a split second in the blink of an eye. There will be something different than what we are today. And that we'll rise and meet Christ in the air. The dead in Christ will rise. For, I believe that completely. But to say that starts about seven years before Christ returns or three and a half years before or doing it or after it, that's not what the Bible says. I'll read a little bit of that today. Those of you counting on a rapture, many of you think it should have happened already or, or will soon happen. It won't. It won't. Matthew 24, 9 to 14, Then they will deliver you. He's talking to his disciples. They'll deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. 
and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. And then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. You know, when you finally just see so much evil going on, you finally just say, well, throw the book at them, you know, and you don't even care. Lawlessness will abound. It causes many to not care, not love anymore. But he who endures to the end shall be saved. I'm reading in Matthew 24, verse 14 now, in this gospel. So we have to endure to the end. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. We're not there yet. Some believe, I certainly believe it as the, the final part of it, that the two witnesses certainly will be preaching the gospel. I hope, I believe. Uh, all cameras will be on them because it says the whole world will see them lying there dead for three and a half days. There's also the um, angels of God, one like an eagle flying around the world, preaching the gospel. I mean, so some strange things, exciting things, will be happening. Uh, we certainly are trying, many, many of us are trying to get into China and Russia and North Korea, South Korea, the, the Islamic states, to let them understand the Bible. And that's why I print out the whole scripture. That's why I don't do abbreviations. Because people out there watching this don't have a Bible. A lot of times they have internet access, they don't have a Bible. So all of you listening to me from China, North Korea, some many of you do, Pakistan, and uh, Sri Lanka, India, uh, Mexico, and all over the world. Thank you for being here, and uh, may God be with all of you. Anyway, so all of this lawlessness and the persecution happens before Christ returns. Let's get this straight. All of God's children will be persecuted for their belief in Christ up to a point. All of us will be. I do strongly believe, it was shown in Scripture, that at the end, the final three and a half years, called the Great Tribulation, that lasts for 1260 days, that's three and a half years, 42 months, it talks about 42 months in other places, that's also three and a half years, and the expression time, times, and half a time is also three and a half years. So there's a culminating three and a half year period just before Yeshua returns. Up before that point, we all have to go through it, as I, understand, as I understand it. But I do believe some of God's people, not all, are offered protection if they've shown themselves to be counted uh, zealous and worthy, seeking after God. Zealous, worthy of protection. I, we read earlier Luke 21, 36. We can put it up again. Watch, therefore, pray always. Pray always. Talk to God many times a day. I make it a goal to talk to God 15, 20 times a day at least. And then a couple times on my knees and just, you know, more, more formal prayer, but many, many times touching base, speaking to Father, speaking to Yeshua. Pray always that you may be, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape. I think that could mean, pray, Father, please help me be counted worthy to escape. It can also mean, because I'm praying so much, God counts me worthy to escape. Maybe both. Look at what Yeshua says to the church at Philadelphia, the seven churches of Revelation 2 and 3. In Revelation 3, verses 10 to 12, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, hour of testing, that shall come upon the whole world. This great tribulation is not just for a few people. It's a whole world. But I will keep you from that time, he's saying. Revelation 3. Hope it's up there. You're watching it now. To test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I'm coming quickly. I'm not there yet, but I'm coming quickly. And I'm going to reward you by protecting those of you who are of this attitude, the Philadelphian attitude, from having to go through the worst of it, the worst time the world's ever seen. You keep reading in Revelation 3, you come to the Sardis church, and then you come to the Laodicean church. You don't want to be a Laodicean in attitude. You do not. You do not. He strongly implies that they have to go through this great tribulation to be refined like gold in the fire. In Revelation 3, verses 17 to 20, because you say, this is a mouthy, Laodicea means... Uh, 
uh, judgment by the people or rule of the people or something like that. I'll find out. I'm going to give a sermon soon on don't be a Laodicean, something like that. Be watching for it. Because you say, I'm rich, I become wealthy. God must be blessing me. I must be good because I'm so blessed. I have need of nothing and don't know that you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Spiritually, you're poor and blind and naked. Physically, you might be doing well. Don't let that confuse you, God says. I counsel you buy from me gold refined in the fire. That's, I believe, the great tribulation. That you may be truly rich. Gold refined in the fire that you may be rich. And get some white garments on because you're naked. Put some real ice salve. They were famous for their ice salve and their black woolen garments. And they're famous for their, uh, their hot springs and cold springs. It really came out as a tepid water. As they, they got water that, from other areas that were supposed to be hot springs or cold springs. And, but by the time it got to their city, it was tepid. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I'm here. I'm here. He said to Philadelphia, I come quickly. To them, he says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I am the door. What are you doing shutting the door to me? He says, I'll come in and dine with them and he with me and so on. And those who overcome, okay, will uh, sit with me on my throne. And so on. He goes on to say, so... I am praying almost daily. Father, forgive me for any Laodiceanism in me, for being Laodicean, not being as zealous as I should be. Forgive me for my lukewarmness. So you don't want to be Laodicean. Uh, that's a group of people where, people where Yeshua is saying, I'm here. Don't keep looking for me to come. I'm here. I'm at your door. They're living at the time when Christ returns. There are also many more scriptures that indicate that there's protection. I showed you the one in Revelation 3. There's one in Daniel 12.1, we'll put up now, that talks about Michael standing up at this great time. This follows Daniel 11 about these big battles going on and news from the north and east and all this. You can read that too. Uh, and there shall be a time of trouble such as there never was since there was a nation. Even to that time, I'm, I'm reading Daniel 12, verse 1. This is a time of great, terrible times. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone, all those who are written in the book, in the book of life, in God's book of life, they shall be delivered. But then he says to the Laodiceans, um, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. And we also find in Revelation 12 that the woman who gave birth to the child, whoever the woman is, some most, most that I associate with believe that's God's uh, spiritual church. Others believe that's the nation of Judah because it was the nation of Judah that gave birth to the Christ child. Anyway, whatever it is, they are protected, taken to their place in the wilderness. Satan goes after them, but God protects them. And then you read the rest of Revelation 12. I'll, I'll put in my notes, I think it's verse 7, 14 or 17, something like that. Satan's angry. He goes after the rest, the remnant of the woman. He goes after those who weren't taken to a place of safety. And they're going to go through great tribulation. Some of you who believe in a rapture, especially a pre-tribulation -trib, pre rapture, uh, you believe will be gathered up to Christ. There's no question we will be. But the scripture clearly says that that gathering to Christ is the first resurrection. And all of that happens after he returns to gather his elect, as it says in Matthew 24, which we'll read next here. And... Um, 1 Thessalonians 4 talks about it as well. 1 Corinthians 15 talks about it. But it's certainly not a secret rapture. People are going to know it's happening. As lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, you can't even be indoors and miss lightning that's brilliant and close by. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. And then verse 28, immediately after, after, the tribulation of those days. He just talked about a great tribulation, a time of trouble the world's never seen so bad. After those times, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light. That's the sixth seal. The tribulation is the fifth seal. The sixth seal is signs in the sky. Stars will fall from heaven. We'll probably have near hits from asteroids or meteors coming down. And the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then the sign, and one verse says, shaken like you like a, shake a, a fruit tree of all of its uh, fruits and so forth, nuts and whatnot. 
and then the sign of the sun will appear in heaven, son of man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see, they will see the son of man. This is not a secret rapture. Some say this is after the rapture, this is now coming back for the rest, did it make it the first time? I'm just telling you what it says. After the tribulation, they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, same one as 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17, and he will gather together his elect, his chosen ones, from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Okay, so let's now step back and start with, so you see what's happening here. What I want to do now in the time I have left, I'm trying to make these a little shorter, is to talk about world conditions leading up to the very end of years before Christ returns. And I'll quit here in a few more minutes. Some things we got to see is a tragic, awful war in Ukraine. Ukraine. Be watching it. It really could spill over into a European-wide world war or European-wide war and then World War III. It could. Putin is desperate. We need to watch news with a suspicious eye. We're being told what they all want us to hear. Like I said earlier, Zelensky banned all 11 of his opposition parties. That's hardly democracy. I bet you didn't hear that. One or two have reported. Most newscasts have totally abandoned that. World events will get far worse for a few years to go. We may see peace treaties of sorts. They will be broken eventually. Those peace treaties might allow then uh, for... A, a settlement in Europe, I mean, a, 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 from Europe and other places for Jerusalem, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see Jerusalem be made an international city guarded by a UN or international peace force. Uh, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, it may not be an antagonistic army at first. It may be a peacekeeping army. I'm just saying, what I'm trying to say in this portion of my teaching is, is, Look beyond the box. Look outside the squares and the boxes we, you've been put into. Think a little more openly. And I think, again, at the end of all of this, we'll be wondering or we'll be saying to each other, boy, that's a lot different than what we thought would, would happen or how it would come about. And remember the seals. When you have a seal, you're opening a scroll and you break the first seal. You see now what seal number one is. You come to the second seal, you break that open. They stay, those stay open once they're open. They stay open. You go out to the next one, break it open. It stays open. So now seals one, two, and three are all open. So I personally do feel that before the Great Tribulation starts, we'll see the third temple built in Jerusalem. Now, a lot of these things have got to be started soon, or else Christ is not coming in seven or ten years. He's not, because he himself said certain things have to happen. The third temple, I don't believe it's going to be just a tabernacle or just a, an altar, is built in Jerusalem. Animal sacrifices are restarted. They already have, they already have the, red, the red heifers and all that, uh, two of them, last I've heard. They're now already, according to the Temple Institute, working on actual blueprints for the actual temple. I have seen with my own eyes, and I've taken pictures. I'll show you perhaps a picture here of, um, of the, uh, the priestly crown that he wears, holiness to Jehovah, that's written on it. And uh, I'll show you that. And maybe a couple others like, um, let's see what else, the, the table of showbread. I can show you that. I can show you the, 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 the alt altar of incense. And I can show you also the, we'll show you also the, um, the uh, seven lights. What do you call that? Right? That's all done. That's all ready. That's already all made, pure gold, and uh, ready. In fact, they, they announce it right on there that this will be the menorah that will go in the temple, in the third temple. They expect to have a temple. You, you, I don't know that you'd have a menorah and everything if it's all you have is an altar. But anyway, so that's before the Great Tribulation starts. Uh, then at some point, this horrible man of sin will stop sacrifices that will usher in the final three and a half years. I'll say more about this later in my uh, in my next sermon, but in a nutshell, that's where we can, as far as I can go today. Uh, be watching and waiting for me to get into part two. We'll go into far more detail about the sacrifices and uh, being started and stopped in Jerusalem and the verses that say that uh, there will be a first resurrection of spirit bodies at the end, the very end when Christ does return. But before He returns, we can still expect a lot to happen. 
Where does China fit into all this? Where does Russia fit in? How might Russia-Ukraine war fit into this? What will happen to the U.S. dollar? Uh, I predict it's going to crash. And uh, a new dollar, a new world currency will have to be used. Uh, the Chinese are trying to promote their yuan, their, U -Y, their Y-U-A-N, their particular money. What about these 300 elites who think they're going to rule the world and everybody else, everybody else is going to be serfs? What about them? And where should our focus be right now? And all of this is going to happen very quickly and suddenly. And so I hope you'll watch part two. And uh, glad you were with us were with us today. And I'm looking forward to continuing this with you in part two. God bless you. Let's just ask God's blessing for a second. Father in heaven, we conclude this now and ask your blessing. Please open our minds to see things, Father, not to be so obtuse that something's happening right in front of us and we don't even see it. Please, dear God in heaven, open our minds to see you. Pour out your Holy Spirit to your people. Pour out your guardian angel protection around us, our own um, iron dome of Holy Spirit all around us. Please, Father in heaven, protect us from pandemics, and please let us be ready and counted worthy to escape these things. We look to you, Father in heaven. We praise you in Jesus' name, Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Visit the Light on the Rock website where you can view additional videos, over 600 sermons and blogs as a scriptural study reference for those who desire to have a closer relationship with God the Father and His Son Jesus Christ and learn more about His incredible plan for all mankind. We are not a church, but a nonprofit organization providing in-depth biblical studies free for all who would like to visit our site. The Light on the Rock Foundation also supports an orphanage in Kenya, providing financial resources to support their living costs and education. We never ask for money. However, any donations are greatly appreciated and will be used to support the Kenyan orphanage and our site. Thank you for visiting. And if you find the site beneficial to you and your family, please share with others.